All right, it's Wednesday and uh, decided to stay late tonight. Do a little bit of work on the single cab. The goal for tonight is we're going to dig into this treasure chest area. I believe I have some video on my hard drive from when I removed the treasure chest. I'm gonna try to find that and I'll maybe throw that in the video here somewhere if I can round it up. I was looking for it last night and wasn't able to find it, but I've got a couple more places to look. Um, but let me just show you what I did. Bring you up to speed on that in case I can't find that. I don't know if you can see right here. I've cut that hinge. I've cut this hinge. Here's the treasure chest. Basically, that's what we're dealing with right there. Crusty, crusty latch. And I could not, I couldn't free it up. Um, you know, the treasure chest door is actually pretty, pretty clean, pretty straight. Um, it's obviously completely packed with dirt all up in here. I'm going to have to clean that all up. But, uh, you know, the, the actual door itself is pretty clean. I decided the least invasive way to get that off or the easiest way to get that off was just to make a, a cut across each of these hinges, which allowed me to pull it out and just lift it up. And I got it out without uh, damaging it. I have soaked at least the lower screws on this divider. Should be able to get those out. I'm gonna have to crawl in there. This is gonna be a little awkward because uh, I mean I'm not I'm not a little guy. Um, I'm not a big guy, but it's gonna be a little messy. Let's just face it. And then once uh, once I get these out, once I dig out all this dust, I've uh, actually picked up some rain gear, and I also picked up a short wand or short handle for my pressure washer. I didn't want to pressure wash the outside because I didn't want to damage the finish. I'm not going to say paint because there's some of you out there, or at least one of you out there, I believe somewhere in uh, Rome or somewhere that uh, thinks this thing ought to be sandblasted down and completely repainted. But I'm going to say finish instead of paint. I don't want to damage the finish on the outside. Inside here, I plan to... Uh, probably probably just gonna repaint all this gray with uh, like a zero rust or some type of rust paint rust inhibiting paint but let's do it guys let's I'm gonna set up a GoPro over here in the corner and we're just gonna get after it and see what we can get done tonight the goal is tonight all of this dirt cleaned out and pressure washed and then we can take a look at the floor in here this floor was definitely underground, um, a good 10 inches probably. So it'll be interesting to see what the floor in this thing looks like after being buried for that long. Let's do it. Okay, I got those uh, those bottom two off. These are actually just kind of like a coarse thread self-tapping. I don't know, not self-tapping, but you know what I mean, a coarse thread metal screw. They're not, they're not threaded or tapped. Um, but these last two on the bottom were a little ornery. Ended up using a just a, a 3 8 ratchet, a small, this looks like a quarter ratchet, but it's actually a 3 8 and then uh, just a Phillips head on it. Gave it a couple wraps with the ball peen hammer and that kind of broke things loose. Haven't looked inside here yet. I've peeked in through the corner. Got a pretty good idea what's going on in there. But I uh, figured I'd just throw the hammer up against here and pull this out and let you guys see what we're dealing with. And look at that divider. You would think that maybe, you know, along the bottom here we'd have some rot, but nothing panels in great shape and we can see the dirt line now 
I remember right, if we go back and look at the original video, uh, you know, the dirt line was a lot more, it was kind of up in this area somewhere. Um, obviously, the dirt that got inside the truck, you know, it was a little lower. So, I'm gonna work on that panel back there. I don't know how I'm crawling in there just yet. Um, you can see I've already pulled a couple of the screws off the top, but uh, I'm gonna go in there, get the bottom ones freed up, then we're gonna dig out the bolts for the tank strap, uh, get those straps off, get the tank pulled out. We're gonna dig all this dirt out of here, which there looks like there's quite a bit, um, and get to cleaning and then we'll take a look and see what we're dealing with rest wise okay guys i figure i'll take you in there with me and uh, show you what i'm doing first of all this opening here is 15 and a half inches but once you get in here this opening here is 13 inches um 13 inches yeah give you a little perspective on that i mean i'm basically i'm 6'2 I'm probably 245, 250 maybe. It depends. I haven't been uh, eating as well as I should. I might be 250 right now. But that's, you know, I'm a big kid. 13 inches. You know that, uh, you know that guy that was filming the grizzly bears up in Alaska? And uh, they just came across all his camera gear. And basically had film of him, I guess, getting chewed up or mauled or eaten by the grizzly bears. This may be my last video. They may just, uh, a couple weeks from now when the girls realize I haven't been home for a while, they'll come down here and find me wedged in the treasure chest of the single cab. And uh, this will, this may be my last video ever. Uh, I don't know if I can get out of there once I get back in there. But let's give it a whirl. Oh man, it's tight. <clears throat> Ooh belly of the beast and uh, speaking of bellies mine barely fits in here I don't know what do you guys think I'm seeing some spider webs that's not good I'm not a fan of spiders all right so these top ones I don't remember honestly don't remember taking those off those may have, maybe they were taken off. Maybe these guys went in, did something on the fuel tank, and just never put those top ones back on. Actually, this one up here, if you look close, looks like it's broken off. That one looks like it's broken off. That one over here is loose. But I honestly don't remember. It's been a while back that one of my attempts to dig into this project, and I started down here basically and the only thing I did find in the treasure chest I don't know if I already mentioned this but was a, a 15 inch bus wheel uh, one of its original wheels and an old tire so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna set up uh, I'll set the camera up here we're just gonna give each of these three a little tap with the uh, ball peen hammer and try to loosen those up and then we're going to do some gardening. Alright, I'll take a little pick. Pick the crud out of the... Pick the crud out of the uh, heads of these screws. Whew! It's tight. Be a good job for the girls, but uh, the girls lately had a few people comment on a couple videos 
And that's what the girls have been up to. You know, the girls, uh, they're busy kids. Um, four to five days a week, depending on the time of year. They're studying at a local ballet studio. And they are pretty active with that. I mean, they're at ballet every night until, I think it's about 7.30. So when Stacy picks them up, and what I'm doing here is I'll just wrap on these. Yeah, it helps. First of all, to uh, just kind of seat the seat the head of the screwdriver in there, and then it helps to knock the screw loose a little bit. So if the screw's kind of rusted in there, it'll actually. it up did I mention it's ridiculously tight in here so anyways um, <clears throat> they haven't actually started driver's ed yet uh, Lex is actually 17 now Savannah is 15 she'll actually be 16 this June Should have soaked these. I take that dust mask off because I have a hard time breathing in it. Try not to kick up too much dust here. All right, one more to go. Get a little Ziploc bag here. And all my crusty old hardware probably replace those but I'll keep them keep them organized all right last one so far no creepy crawlies spotted no spiders believe it or not even though I'm not a big fan of spiders We've actually got a tarantula at the house that Alexa and Savannah got many moons ago. I think that thing's probably nine or ten years old by now. We also have a small collection of jumping spiders that we've that they've caught. And up until about a week ago, we actually had a black widow spider that was a pet. Um, the girls during the summer actually zoo crew members here at the they volunteer at the local zoo we've been doing that for i think alexa three years and savannah too so they're pretty into the whole animals and bugs and everything like that so that's why they haven't been down here at the shop that much um, oh crud i got one more up there in the corner i'm trying not to try not to push them you know, the, the last thing you want to do as a parent is push your kids to do things that you think they should do. Ballet is something that they're super, super into. It's actually their thing. We never push them to do it. And I think kids are actually better off if you don't push them on stuff like that. You just kind of let them make their own choices and do what they love. Hopefully one of these days, you know, when they do decide to get their licenses, that's obviously not the one that goes in there. It doesn't match the others anyway. Um, but yeah, one of these days maybe, maybe they'll decide to uh, come down here and tinker on their cars. You know, the 60 double cab is Savannah's. That's her, her vehicle when she... One of these days when she decides she's ready to come down here and tinker on the car, that's that's hers. And then Alexa, of course, has the 56 Ragtop Beetle Euro. That's a semaphore car. That's Alexa's. And I guess I'm just kind of waiting for them to decide they want to do that. 
So actually up here where I, I was just saying a minute ago, those were broke off. They're actually, they're actually there. I'm thinking, uh, I'm thinking somebody had pulled these out and was maybe accessing the tank or something. On a bus, there's no divider between like the engine and the fuel tank. On the trucks though, you know, you come in here through the treasure chest. Actually a double cab doesn't have a treasure chest. So you actually go in behind the rear seat but on a single cab, you've got the dividers here through the treasure chest. All right, let's let's drop this out. See what we're dealing with. Maybe we'll find a couple big bricks of gold in here, you know. We'll just uh Oh yeah, look at that. That's actually That actually that had to have happened when they were trying to pull the tank probably maybe turning the bolt and snapped that or that's broken that probably didn't just break on its own but let's uh i'll see if i can get out of here and we'll uh try to get that tank so this divider's in good shape like the other one no rot really to speak of I mean there's surface rust obviously but you know a lot of times like these panels like this the rot will start on the edge and the edge will just be all rough and corroded look at the paint down here I mean all this right here that wasn't in the water in the dirt muck is nice beautiful original gray paint um i'll probably refinish these like i say i think the plan is to just completely refinish this whole treasure chest area um possibly the engine bay as well definitely uh the undercarriage i'm gonna completely repaint everything under there with rust inhibiting paint all right uh time to dig into that tank see if we can get that out of there Got. Man, some of this is hard to reach. Decided to cut the strap. Um, it was just easier. I'm gonna replace them anyways gonna be replacing the tank as well actually found a rust hole um, in the tank and the tank was completely full of I don't know dirt or something not fuel I kind of got a problem here because I'm trying to protect my eyes. I actually wear, I wear contact lenses. This is not the best environment for contact lenses. However, I also trying to wear a dust mask. And with the two 
they just don't go together if you've ever tried that. You get to kind of fog up your fog up your dust your 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 glasses with your dust mask. I don't know. Probably ought to just throw the dust mask back on. Trying to get stuff in my eyes. Probably would be better off with a visor. However, it's really tight in there. And uh, not sure a big visor would actually work with the area we have to work in. This is going to be interesting pressure washing this area because. This channel along here is it for the divider, the base for the divider is right in the way. I think I'm going to go ahead and make a quick cut on those two straps. Actually, this one should be able to just get out. Rest it away. Cut that other one. Make a quick cut on this bolt too. Okay. Whew. I mentioned it's tight in here. All right. So this is where the tank sits right here. This is an opening in the floor, the bottom of the tank. And I'm just uh, doing some digging here. There's some old fuel line. And this right here. I mean, this is just solid dirt underneath. Crazy I'm trying to get a, this dug out so that uh, when I start washing in here, this water's got somewhere to go because right now it literally has nowhere to go. I'll tell you what, this, this dirt is packed in here like concrete. I was hoping I was going to be able to do this. Like, just put it up on some jack stands and pressure wash from underneath. But the more I think about it, I've actually got all the metal over in the corner to build a dodecagon rotisserie. Now everybody's looking up dodecagon. Except for uh, some of you out there. I think that's what it is. Dodecagon. Anyways, uh, I'm getting ready to cup, oh, cut a wire here that comes to this piece. This is actually the reserve valve. So basically, actually, let me grab one other piece that I just found. This, <coughs> excuse me, this would go right here. I don't know if you can see that. So this would go here. This is actually the bottom of the tank rusted off. This is a collar that screws on. These two tubes coming through here. See, there's two of them. One would be short, the other one would be, I think, roughly an inch longer. And uh, then this would go up to the cab, and there is a handle or a, a, a lever, I guess, that you would pull. It's not really a lever because it's actually just a pull tab that you would pull on. 
And so this, this bus, this truck did not have a gas gauge. This is the pre-screen, um, kind of the, the fuel filter, if you will. Um, that would just screen the fuel going down into these two little inlets. You'd be burning along and you've got your longer tube. You're pulling fuel off your longer tube. And then uh, where there's no gas gauge, you just have no idea um, when you're low. I mean, I guess you would have kind of an idea depending on when you fueled up and how many miles you've gone. But you just your engine will just start sputtering, indicates that you're out of fuel. You would pull your reserve and it, it moves a, a flap inside here. And so now instead of pulling off of the tall inlet, you're pulling off the short one which gives you um, an extra, I'm not positive actually, an extra gallon or, or so of fuel and you know ideally enough to get you to the next gas station. Um, and then hopefully when you fuel up you remember to push your, your uh, close your valve so you're back, you're not running on the reserve because if you forget to uh, push that back in and you're running on your your uh, reserve it's just going to keep pulling off that short tube and when you start to sputter you're going to be out of gas but uh, yeah check that out kind of kind of interesting i think it's safe to say that this guy is a goner it's probably just going to be wall art probably hanging in the office and uh be something for people to look at and say what the heck is that anyways so let's do the t-shirt giveaway question for this video what year what was the first year for let's let's be specific here first year for a split window bus uh, delivered to the United States an American spec American delivered split window bus what was the first year that they had a fuel gauge instead of the reserve valve. Comment below, first person to comment with the correct year, I'll send you out a Volkswagen t-shirt. Let's keep digging. All right guys, it's about uh, quarter to 11. I should say guys and gals, everybody, whatever. You know, you get the picture. Hopefully we got some ladies out there watching too. Anyways, according to my analytics, it's mostly mostly the fellas watching. But anyhow, here we are. I don't know if you can see up in there. Pretty much all the big stuff's out. I'm not looking forward to this next part, guys. I went uh, I went to a little farm and ranch store earlier tonight and I picked up some uh, rain gear I picked up uh, some gloves hopefully enough stuff to keep me dry although right now I'm covered in dirt from head to toe so I don't know probably better cover up with some rain gear it's gonna turn to mud but uh, so far I don't know it's actually not looking too bad I might scrape this section one more time. My squeegee fits up in here pretty good. So squeegee it out. Then uh, I'm gonna crank up the old Subaru powered. Well, I don't think it's Subaru powered, but it's a Subaru brand pressure washer. And uh, we'll get to cleaning this thing out. Take some final shots of it. And I'm, then I might try to get home and actually I don't know if I'm going to get this video slammed together tonight. It might be tomorrow, but we'll see what happens. Let's get cracked. I almost forgot to mention my pile of dirt here. There it is. A pile of dirt. A little forced perspective there. Make Peter Jackson proud. That's how they made the hobbits look small. Lord of the Rings. Or Gandalf look large anyway. There it is. That is a pretty good sized pile of dirt. 
probably at least two five gallon buckets maybe just a little more than that and it looks like at least one rodent mouse or rodent mouse nest that was right in the bottom of the fuel tank there as far as any other artifacts I already showed you the shut off valve or not the shut off valve but the reserve valve We've got a crowbar this guy here is probably for popping the popping the hubcaps off those are the straps I cut off and that was really about it all right I'm gonna clean up my big pile of dirt here um, and then it's time to get to uh, play in the water a little all right guys it's about to get serious I got the long gun here gonna go in first with the long gun try to get everything we can and we're gonna come in with the pistol just pick this bad boy up obviously I don't have a tip in it right now but uh, I figured for tight spaces I was actually gonna just get one of these and cut it down jumped on Amazon and what do you know they make one so just got the pistol there got the long gun I was actually over at the store earlier picking up some rain gear I almost bought hundred and sixty dollars worth of Carhartt like jacket coveralls ended up picking up these how was it tingly um, these things are pretty legit for like 26 bucks so saved myself a lot of money I'm glad I ran by the poncho aisle before uh, checking out with the Carhartt Carhartt stuff look nice but ah, for what I'm doing this stuff here tingly which is not a sponsor of the programming this evening, but uh, they could be. Anyways, um, let's get after it. Okay, so it's uh, it's time to take a look in the treasure chest. Quick, uh, just quick reminder here. This truck, as far as we know, now according to the plate here, as you can see, 1967. Now this was being used on a farm, a farm truck. I've actually spoke with a nephew of the original owner, and he said, you know, it could have been on the road for another year or so after 67. Um, might have just ran it for a year without uh, without current tags so somewhere 67 68 that's you know 50 51 years so we're about to look inside the treasure chest of this thing um, and see what what the condition of the floor is after 50 years of sitting and a very you know significant period of that time it was subterranean um, treasure chest floor had roughly four or five inches of packed dirt um, of course we're high desert here so uh, let's take a look and I'll show you guys <clears throat> excuse me what what it looks like tried drying things out in here but uh, there's still a few kind of wet spots even though Actually, uh, I finished this up early this morning. It's about 7 38 o'clock now. I finished up washing this uh, this morning about 1 o'clock. But uh, let me pull my headlamp off here. I'll try to show you what we're dealing with. It is actually pretty dang solid. There's a little, very small little pinhole right there. Even along here on the sill, 
pretty dang clean. So there you have it guys, that is a pretty solid, pretty solid floor um, by VW bus standards. I mean these things are notorious for rusting out. I mean some of these areas where you would just kind of expect there to be some rust, there's just not. You know right up in here for example, this is right behind <clears throat> the passenger front floor. This area is just notorious for rust. Um, we're right above the jacking point here and the outrigger. And this area is one of the first areas where you kind of see rust. Actually, if you look right here, I don't know if that's a one of the bullet, one of the bullet holes or not. There's bullet holes all over the front of this thing. Then all, all across this front here, which is essentially you know, right behind what would be the bulkhead. You know, this is usually prone for rust as well. And, you know, there's a lot of surface rust here, obviously. But rot, you know, where it's actually rotten and rotted through, there, there's really none to speak of. <clears throat> so my plan from here, if you look up here, you can see the gray color. I'm kind of researching right now. I'm trying to trying to decide which which way I'm going here, and, and I'd love love some input from you guys on on what you think. Um, I'm not stripping this down. I'm not sandblasting it. I'm gonna probably get in there and you know rough it up a little bit. Try to scrape off anything that I didn't get with the pressure washer. But I'm looking at the rust converters, and there is also you know the rust sealer basically you know something similar to like a POR 15 paint over rust I'm leaning more towards the converter uh, go, come in here with a, a rust converter paint everything with the rust converter and then come back in on top of that converter with a gray paint that's sorta of where I'm leaning we uh, we obviously are going to have to do the exact same thing underneath it. I want to just, I'm not, I'm not getting too carried away in here as far as like, you know, sandblasting or anything like that. We're going to use either a rust converter or a rust sealer to seal this all up and just get it all put back together where we can use it and hopefully, you know, drive it in, in some rain and snow if we can get it all sealed up nice and and tight. Um, <clears throat> the underside of this truck is just as packed as the treasure chest was. I had hoped that I could possibly just put it up on some jack stands and you know crawl underneath there and blast everything but after last night after crawling around in there with the pressure washer and trying to clean everything I realized that I, I really got to get this on a rotisserie I've actually got over here, right there actually, this is uh, all metal for a dodecagon, a 12 sided um, rotisserie. It's not going to be near as cool as Glide King's rotisserie. That rotisserie that, that Kurt had is pretty dang cool. Um, but I've already got all the sheet metal to do the old style one that, uh, you know, years ago, dropgates.com actually, I believe, was one of the first places to post that style, that multi-gone, dodecagon rotisserie. And it's a pretty easy um, rotisserie to build. I'm probably going to, in the next one or two videos on this, we'll uh, throw together a video on, on welding that rotisserie up. 
we'll get it mounted and then that way I can just take this whole thing and just rotate it on its side and we can get underneath there we can blast everything we can remove anything that needs replaced and it'll just be a lot better situation than trying to do it you know on a creeper or, you know from underneath so I've got to get that done like I say that'll be in the next hopefully within the next week week and a half um, a couple other projects I got to knock out first probably our next video will be the engine bay we'll get that cleaned up real good and at that point we're basically at remove the front beam uh, weld up the rotisserie and get this thing sitting on its side so we can clean it up underneath I uh, mentioned earlier in one of the videos you know this rust right here that panel is going to be replaced inner and this outer rocker on this side are, are pretty bad so I'll be putting in this short section of rocker and the inner the long wall though for for the most part looks pretty good I don't think we're gonna have to do anything over there on the long wall we'll know more once we get on the rotisserie and we flip it over and get a better look underneath anyways guys that's the end of tonight's video appreciate you watching I actually had a couple people hit us up today on patreon we've got two patrons on there so kind of kind of stoked on that i'm not going to call them out or say their names right now if they're cool with that maybe we'll give them a shout out in one of the future videos but uh appreciate you guys watching appreciate you subscribing sharing the content supporting the channel in any way you can and we will see you next time catch you later